this is David for Big Bits, and in this video we're going to go over a function we have not covered yet, and that is the alert condition. And if you've seen the video title, you know what we are going to do is we are going to create a custom alert message. Now, if you're not familiar with alerts in TradingView, you can use them to um, simply alert you with the pop-up on the screen. They can send you an email, and they can also hook into webhooks. Uh, some people also use alerts for uh, trading bots. There are some extensions. Um, I can't really say anything about those. I don't really know too much about those. But this, um, this particular script was a request by one of the YouTube commenters. And I appreciate that because uh, I haven't really looked into the alert conditions too much. But we've got it figured out. And I'm going to show you exactly how this works. So first of all, as always in the video, I'm going to show you our end result first, uh, especially for those of you who don't know how to make an alert, this might be helpful. First thing you need to do, uh, in particular, we need to add this indicator, and this is on my uh, public scripts. It should be in the public library soon once it gets indexed. And what we're doing is we're adding this indicator, but then we have to add an alert. Okay, uh, you open up the alerts tab here and make sure I'm not in the way on the screen here. Uh, then click here to create a new alert. You can do that or you can hit the little plus button here. Let's do this one. Now on the condition, uh, it's referring to what indicator or what part of the chart you're looking at. So we want to actually select our custom alert message, uh, the indicator that we're working with here. If you've created your own with this code, you would select whatever you named it and saved it. Now. Uh, it'll give us all of the different options for the alert conditions. Now these are built in. Uh, number one and number two here are ones that we've created in this particular uh, example. And we're just going to go ahead and select custom RSI. Um, I'm only going to have it show a pop-up. You can see the message that it has set here. And uh, it's going to pop up immediately, well, relatively immediately because of how I've got it set up. We'll go over that later. But once you're ready, make sure you've got everything that you want selected for the actions on the alert. Uh, so you can set an expiration time if you needed to and how often the alert can actually occur. I'm only going to do this once because this is just an example. Let's go ahead and hit create. Should take just a moment and we should get a pop up in the middle of the screen. There we go. Our RSI is 55 and a bunch of decimals. Uh, and we can look here, it's 55 and a bunch of decimals. So the alert worked it showed us what the rsi value is and there's plenty of documentation on how to do this uh, if you click on create alert there's a little plus button down here and uh, if you haven't noticed you can actually click on that and it can give you more information about the placeholders and the placeholders are those uh, custom messages that we can put in using the uh, indicators that we've plotted. So if you want to put a custom value in there, you have to plot it on the screen to get it to show up. And they have a bunch of built-in ones such as the exchange, the ticker, uh, the close volume, things like that are already built in, whereas the custom values that you want to use we are going to have to reference their plot using the plot ID. Now it's very important that you remember that you're using the plot ID, uh, not the plot title or uh, any, any other combination uh, of possible inputs you could possibly have here. It has to be plot underscore the ID of the plot and the plot ID is determined by the order in which it's plotted. So now we can actually look at the code because now I kind of have to explain what uh, that means. Um, what we're going to be looking at is we're just going to be looking at the RSI and just a simple EMA, a three period EMA of the RSI. And I have got this set to where it's always going to be true. We're, we're always going to get an alert whenever TradingView processes these alert conditions. And that's just because we're doing this example. And I've made sure to comment in here, remove this line if you're going to copy this code, because this will always uh, make this, uh, create the alerts constantly, no matter what you're doing. Uh, ideally, what you would do is something like this, create a, a Boolean, 
and uh, assign that true or false based on some sort of conditions. And in this example, it was, you know, I wanted the RSI to be less than 30, uh, the RSI of the previous candle to have been less than 20, but the current RSI uh, is greater than the last RSI. So basically the RSI was really oversold and it's moving up now. It's a really simple example, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what you can do. You can even compare different indicators, all kinds of stuff. If you want ideas for that stuff, please go back and look at all the other videos in this uh, series so far. We've covered a lot of different stuff, and if you want to combine different indicators, there's a lot of great resources in those videos. Now, we are always going to have an alert, but I told you we need to plot IDs, so the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to have to plot this information on the chart. Now, we are going to plot our EMA, our exponential moving average of the RSI first. And we're going to call that the plotted smooth RSI and it is the blue uh, value on the indicator here. Now, that would be plot ID 0. And I probably should have added this uh, earlier, but that gives you the idea this is a zero indexed uh, based array that they're using to do those custom messages when they're looking at the plots. Uh, apparently they add the plots to the chart as an array and the first plot is uh, zero indexed so it starts with zero when you're trying to reference it. And this would be plot one because it is our second one in the zero based index so it would be number one. Now, uh, just to further illustrate that, we're going to call our alert condition. Uh, we're going to tell it whether or not it should be uh, triggered. And we have it set to our Boolean value, our alert, from back here. We have it set to true right now, but ideally, like I said, you would have this set to some sort of condition, uh, multiple different parameters that uh, you would use. Maybe you're just looking to see if the price went up from before. Something like that, you need to be watching for uh, whether or not your conditions are true or false. And you place that true or false value here. Then you can create a title. Uh, personally, I like to um, order those by number so that when you do look at them from the drop down, you can actually have those populated first. Uh, I haven't tested this yet, but if you started it with the letter Z, they might show up at the very end of this list. So uh, it's, in my opinion, a good idea to just number them for yourself. Now, uh, like I said, to further illustrate this, plot one is our RSI. You can see that here. And you can also see we're referencing plot one with the placeholder uh, in the string. Now you don't concatenate strings here. In the previous video, we concatenated strings in functions so that you could change securities. Uh, with the message, if you try to call a function such as toString and the RSI value, it won't let you save the script. So don't waste your time. I tried that plenty of times to figure this out for the first time. Uh, and you also can't uh, put in the values themselves. So this is how it has to be done. You have to call the plot. If you wanted to, you know, maybe reference something that you didn't want to show on your indicator, you could actually plot that value and just make it uh, set to its transparency, having a, a 100 transparency, which means you can't see it on the screen, but it's still being plotted. And uh, you might still be able to interact with it when you hover over it, and you could probably see the values uh, over here on the indicator. But if you didn't want to see it on the indicator, but you still wanted to reference it in the message, you would just create another plot, uh, a plot 2 here, set its transparency to 100 on the plot. You wouldn't be able to see it up here, but you would be able to reference it in your message as plot 2. That's just another example of how you can add more information in here. Now, these don't have to be just the single uh, line, just one different value in here. If you wanted to, you could do uh, multiple placeholders. You could do the RSI is equal to this, then you could do space, uh, current price is equal to the placeholder for the close, and really you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can even do um, calculated values 
but like I said, in order to do that, you have to plot those. So that's essentially what the EMA, the, the first one is here. That's another calculated value based off of the RSI. So maybe we wanted to see what the absolute value of the MACD was for whatever reason. So if it was a negative number, it would actually be positive now. I mean, you could do that, but you have to plot it first on the screen. I, I can't iterate that enough. That's the most important thing. And then reference the correct plot ID. And I hope this all makes sense. Um, it's really not that hard once you do it. But like I said, this code is available on my TradingView profile. And you can see that here. There's a link in the description of the video. Go check that out. You can click that. And I'll probably update uh, the code just a little bit with some of those comments I added during the video. But uh, I hope you appreciated the video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Or if you have any other indicators or functions or anything uh, related to TradingView and PineScript, please leave a comment and let me know what you'd like to see. Otherwise, please like the video, subscribe. All of those things help me quite a bit. Uh, and definitely, if you like these videos, you probably do want to subscribe because there are going to be plenty more. There's going to be other video series coming up. Um, lots of things coming up on the channel. So thank you very much for your time and have a great day.